Well, hello, buddy. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the live start here. I was having some trouble with StreamYard today. It wouldn't let me create a new video. Said I was out of stories. Had to go through and delete a bunch of older live streams in order to uh, get it to work. But I think we're live now. Everything's working fine. So how's everybody doing today? Got one person out there. It's going to open for them. Whatever you guys want to ask me. Uh, of course, I'm home now from the hospital with the baby. Everything went well. Um, and uh, really no problems at all, really. You know, just uh, Jen had to have a cesarean, which uh, we knew was a possibility. You know, the, the doctor told us that uh, new mothers, it's like a 10% chance. So we always knew in the back of our minds that that was a possibility. Went to an excellent hospital, ACE Hospital. Uh, no complaints at all about the hospital, about uh, the uh, treatment that Jen got. Everything was good. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as price and stuff, it wasn't that expensive either. So let's see. Top G Mindset Coach. Nice to see you. Happy Easter. Blessings, brother, all as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's uh, Easter Sunday. What is today? Today's Monday here in the Philippines. So I guess it's Easter someplace else uh, back in America. But, yeah, um, all is well getting settled in. Of course, you know, I'd forgotten. It's been 22 years since I had a baby in the house. So, uh it all comes back to you, though. Um, since Jen had a cesarean, went in the hospital. They, in the, in the, sorry, in the Philippines, they, they give you the baby, you know, as soon as it's born. They don't take it away. They leave it with you. And so Rogan was with us, you know, from right after he was, was born. And uh, you have to look after him yourself. And so Jen was unable to do anything because of the cesarean and, and the anesthesia she was still under. So <clears throat> the first uh, couple days, uh, I was daddy. Uh, I had to take care of everything and uh, changed all of his diapers, fed him, everything, you know, and uh, got used to him. But it was, uh, it's like he's on American time. So he's basically awake all night and sleeps during the daytime. So uh, kind of getting used to that. Let's see who we got here. Uh, I don't want, to, want to miss anybody. Life's lessons for my sons. Hello from Angel City. Congratulations on the baby. Well, thank you so much. Adrian, nice to see you, my friend. Hey, Mark, a huge congratulations to you and Jen and your growing family with Rogan. Um, it's R-O-G-A-N, like Joe Rogan, and it's not a growing family. It's done. <laughs> one and done. No more. This is the last one. We had an agreement. I actually think I'm going to get a lawyer to uh, draw up a, uh, a proper contract and make her sign it. It says, okay, we agreed on one child. This is it. No more. <laughs> But it's great having them. No, it really is, you know, but it just changes everything. You know, it changes the whole dynamics of your life. You know, all of a sudden, he's the most important thing. And it's all good. Corey, nice to see you. Hey, Mark, happy Easter. Congrats on the arrival of Rogan. Thank you. Uh, Edward Lee, congrats. Hope you sleep well. Uh, actually, <laughs> it's funny. Um, in the hospital, they hadn't had, they had, we had got the nicest room in the whole hospital. It's called a birthing suite. They only have one room like this. It's got panoramic views of the city and everything around it. It's on the sixth floor. Had a marble top dining room table and chairs. Had a refrigerator. Had a microwave. Had a coffee maker. Um, had, of course, a bed for Jen in a separate room. Had two rooms to it. Had um, like a little love seat type thing, which, you know, that's where I had to sleep for the last couple of days when I was there. So I had to prop myself up and lean on pillows. And, of course, holding the baby all night long. And uh, I actually was able to sleep because um, I guess because I was so exhausted. Because Jen went into labor at like 5 o'clock in the morning, and we went to the hospital at 6. Um, but anyway, you know, I was, I was able to sleep holding the baby. The problem is when you're in a hospital, any of you guys have ever uh, spent the night in a hospital? Like for me, when I had my quadruple bypass surgery, I remember this, and when my first wife had our child. Um, they don't leave you alone, man. They do not leave you alone. They come in every hour, every two hours, and they, they check your blood pressure, they check your oxygen level, you know, they ask questions, they turn on all the lights, like, I'll spend an hour getting the baby asleep, baby's finally asleep, Jen's asleep, we're all settled in, lights are off, we're finally getting some sleep, boom, lights come, knock, knock, hello, and they turn on all the lights, wake the baby up, do something that takes two minutes, and then they leave, like, one time, it's four o'clock in the morning, and they come in with lab results like just the blood test you know that you know what blood type it is they come in oh here's your paper you know whatever and they give me a piece of paper and they leave and 30 minutes later knock knock another piece of paper from the lab it's like why couldn't they give me that in the morning but it was like that 
The first night was the worst. Like literally every hour, all night long, they would come in for one reason or another. And the second night wasn't too bad. After the second night, when we saw the doctors look, you know, we're ready to go home. Because Jen was up walking around, feeding herself and everything, and said it's time to go home. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I don't want to miss anybody here. Uh, Dave, Alex, congratulations. Thank you. Top G mindset coach. Wait a second, Mark. She had a C-section. Why didn't they cut and tie her tubes at the same time? Because they don't do that here, man. It's a Catholic country. And I wouldn't, I don't want her to have that happen anyway. Like what if after I die, she gets married and she decides she went to somebody else and she wants to have another child. I'm not going to take that, that option away from her. There's other kinds of birth control, you know? So anyway, uh, congrats on the birth of your son uh, from Santa Cruz, Occidental Mindan Mindoro. Congratulations to you all. Thank you so much. Glenn Elliott, congratulations. Thank you. Ace Bachelor Cool. Ace number one, Blatcher, because I'm single cool because I'm Ace Bachelor cool. Well, good for you. I assume you won't be having any kids. Ain't nothing wrong with being a bachelor, man. You know, that's, that's kind of a, a terminology that's kind of gone by the wayside. You know, in the 60s and the 70s, you know, you could say, well, the guy next door is not married. He's a bachelor. And it was perfectly acceptable, you know. But now it's like it's a term that's not even used. And I see nothing wrong with you. You want to be a bachelor? You, you don't have to get married if you don't want to. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, do you guys have a pet dog or a family? Uh, no, I don't want any dogs. We've got three Rottweilers here. They're not mine, though. The owner of this property. And he's got somebody that stays here 24-7 looking after those dogs and feeding them and everything, cleaning up after them. We've got a groundskeeper, too, and a maid. Um, so no uh, no dogs for me. I've been there, done that. No dogs for me. Hey, thank you. So on a super sticker. I haven't gotten a super sticker in ages. That was so nice of you. Uh, this is from Elon Rimford. Uh, congratulations, Big Pop. Well done and happy Easter. I wonder if Rogan already is considering retiring to the Philippines. Well, he's going to have dual citizenship. Um, and I'm going to have to get him a passport as soon as possible. And I'll tell you why. Um, my friend Gary, he's got a YouTube channel too. Um, I think it's Christian in the Philippines or something like that. I can't remember the name of his channel. But anyway. He decided he's got two little girls. One was his wife's child before he married. The other one they had together. And they decided to take a trip to Thailand. Well, his wife and her the little girl, they have Filipino passports, right? Gary uh, and his daughter, you know, that they had together, have, both have American passports. So they decided to go to Thailand for a vacation. They go to Thailand, and... Um, on their way there, uh, they find out that uh, at the airport, they say, well, you know, this little girl, you know, even though she's born in America, she doesn't have a Filipino passport. So they considered her American. She's four years old and they charged him late fees for an exit clearance all the way back for four years. So they paid all this money, thousands of pesos and all this trouble to get his daughter born in the Philippines. But they considered her American because she didn't have a Philippine passport. I guess they didn't have the birth certificate with her and they'd gone to another country and it was a big mess. So we're going to make sure uh, we get him a Philippine passport and then eventually an American passport too. And also I got to sort out the social security. That's on my list of things that I've got to contact social security and report the birth. Otherwise they don't give you any increase in your benefits. Uh, let's see Nat. Hey, good. Almost lunch equal nice hat thinking buying a similar. Yeah, this hat I've had it for years. I actually had a Panama hat and I bought it in Panama. Um, like God, 30 years ago, maybe. And I've had it ever since brought it here. Fortunately, it didn't get crushed. I got a bunch of cool hats that I brought from home. Um, cause you know, I was always hiking and walking around, uh, you know, all over the world. And I used to wear hats everywhere I go cause of the sun, uh, building Philippines with Greg and Wilma guys, you got to check out building the Philippines with Greg and Wilma's or with Wilma and Greg's, um, website or YouTube channel. They got a really good YouTube channel. It's not just about building. They got some interesting information there. Yeah, but if you are thinking about buying a house or building a house, you want to check out building the Philippines with Wilma and Greg. Uh, say congratulations, Mark and Jen. Baby Rogan is very cute. How is he sleeping so far? He's doing great sleeping during the day and keeping us awake all night long. And he works really well. By the way, um, the little rocker thing you got us doesn't put him to sleep when he doesn't want to go to sleep. So um, you got to get your money back on that. So um, we got to, we try everything. I sit there, every single thing. We're passing them back and forth. 
rocking them, walking them, feeding them, changing them. And the thing is, you get him to sleep, and he's asleep. And so Jen lays down, I lay down, we're very quiet. And just as you close your eyes, just as you're going to fall asleep, ah, he wakes up every single time. So I'm going to start calling him rooster. He's like a rooster here. He just wakes it up all the time. But that's just the life of having a baby, I guess. Uh, that's good, loner dogs. Uh, Alan retired in the Philippines. Wife and I say congrats on your baby. We are from Kalaganga, Luzon. Well, if you ever hear it, guys, look me up. You know, I'm always looking for people to have on the show. So if there's any guys that are going to be in Dumaguete or Bakong or in this on this island, you know, and you watch my show, send me an email. It's in the description of all my videos. And come over here to my house and go for a swim and do a video and just, uh, you know, talk about, you know, your life and about whatever you want to discuss, you know, just have a little conversation. So I'm always looking for people. And uh, so if you want to be on the show, just contact me. Uh, big Alawash's boyfriend in the hood, Rogan. Oh, what's mean? You know, we got, so we got trolls today. Trolls are up early. Yeah. It's amazing. Like you do a video about, you know, your new baby and you get somebody out there and sitting in their mother's basement, they probably weigh 500 pounds and they're sitting there insulting a newborn baby. Can you believe that? How low life do you have to be to be insulting a newborn baby? I mean, really? Uh, let's see. Uh, Corey, on Wednesday, I'm going to the world's largest inflatable obstacle course. Should be big fun. I've seen those on YouTube. I could never do that. I'd get killed. You're one of those real fit guys, aren't you, Corey? You're always doing exciting, challenging things. The first uteronic Panama hat, okay? Um, Elon Rimford looks more stylish than a baseball cap. Okay. I just like to wear hats because my hair looks like shit. See? Uh, it's all falling out. At least I've got some. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to, you know, you get to the bald state where, like, it's all bald from, like, your ears all the way back. You still got hair on the side and on the back. And, like, you know, what do you do then? Do you just shave it off? You know, what do you do? You have to make that decision one day. Say, hell, well, I'm just going to shave it all off. So. But for now, I wear hats, you know. I used to always wear hats when I was hiking around on the ship and stuff and go for hikes, but started wearing hats a lot now. I get, I get it's a funny thing. When I'm wearing a hat, for some reason, I do a video, I get more views with I wear a hat if I don't wear a hat. Same video. And I keep telling my friend John Smulo, if you watch his show, um, American Expat in the Philippines, um, I tell John all the time he would look great in a hat. And just try it. Try wearing a hat for a couple of videos and see how your views increase, but he won't do it. Uh, Brian, hello, Mark. Congratulations to you and Jen on the birth of your son. Enjoy your videos. Well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I've got an interview coming up this afternoon. Uh, maybe be doing a double interview this afternoon. I got another interview tomorrow. And so things are stacking up. But last month, I didn't do a lot of videos because literally, you know, the baby could come at any day. And I didn't want to leave Jen alone. I didn't want to take her, drag her into town when she wasn't feeling well. And so, you know, we just sit around here waiting. And so I didn't put out a lot of videos. I think actually last month was my least productive month as far as putting out videos. So I'm going to make up for that this month. I think I'm going to try and do something every day. If I don't do an interview, I'm going to do a live stream. And once again, if you want to be on the show, it's real easy. Just uh, contact me and we'll set up a time and place. Elan Rimford, my parents were fans of. Uh, Either and duct tape. Okay. Um, top mindset coach. Hey, Mark, it took me a month to flip my firstborn son from a night schedule to a day schedule by driving him in the car every evening, and they always fall asleep in the car seat. This is really interesting that you should say this. Um, I did the same thing with my first daughter. As you know, my first daughter was autistic, and we could never get her to so sleep. She didn't sleep hardly at all. And we would do that. We would take her put her in the car um, in the back of, I had a, a Montero sport and we would put all these blankets and pillows and stuffed animals in there and lay her down in there. We would drive around and drive around and drive around in our neighborhood until she would fall asleep. And we did that for a couple of years, you know, and you're right. It did work, you know, driving around, you know, um, I've got a car seat and everything. And we took him into town the other day, where we went. 
Excuse me. And um, he fell asleep in the car seat, you know, just fine. But then yesterday we had to go to the pharmacy to get some medication for Jen. And he cried while he was in there. So now we put him in the car seat. Jen sits in the back with him with a bottle, you know. So, yeah, we'll we'll try that driving around and uh, see if we can get him to go to sleep. But it's just, you know, I also and I know some people do the bundling. You know what that is? My other, my brother, Jamie, did that with his babies, all boys. It's where they wrap them really tightly in a, in a blanket so their arms can't move and they're just bundled up real tight. And it's supposed to calm them down. They go to sleep. But I just don't believe in that. You know, um, I want to be able to move his arms and legs. He wants to suck on his fist. He can do that. Kick his legs, kick his arms. If he wants to get mad and scream. He can do that. Um, and if it keeps me awake, so be it. I, I just don't believe in that. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't want to be tied up like that and, and bound real tight. So, no, I won't do that to him. But I know that's another thing that everybody swears it works. And I know it works. Well, you put it, you do it, and sure enough, they fall asleep. But it's just not worth it to me. Um, Sharon Chu Hum. Congrats, Mark and Jen and baby. Happy everyone is doing well. Blessings. Thank you so much. Uh, babies made nanny as cheap in the Philippines. You're right about that. We don't need a nanny, though. I mean, I mean, my wife doesn't have to work. You know, I'm home. 90% of the time. Her mother and sister are, you know, a few miles away. We do have a maid that comes in once a week, cleans the whole house and does all the all the housework and stuff, you know, every Sunday. And so she doesn't have to clean the house either. So and she Jen wants to be a mother. She doesn't want somebody else taking care of her child. And I don't either. It's like with um, our, my daughters back that are back in England now, when they were little, you know, we looked after them ourselves. You know, we had a business to run back then. You used to own a roller skating rink. And then I was working on ships and we always looked up to the kids ourselves, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, so, um, yeah, beautiful day here today, you know. And um, once he's old enough, you know, I'll be able to take him out in the ocean there. Because uh, during the low tide, there's almost like five acres out there of ocean where the water's like maybe a foot to six inches deep, warm seawater. We can sit out there in a little floaty thing with him, you know, and play in the water. So he's going to love that. Um, I'm not the most fit. I love to work out and challenge myself. I also love to eat. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to start working out now. I got to start getting in shape. I'm going to use, I got a kettlebell, but it's 20 pounds, which is almost too much for the stuff I want to do. So I think I might get a 10 pound one and start there and, I saw a video today on doing all these exercises with a kettlebell. And so I'm going to try that and just do something to start getting in shape. I am, you know, swimming in the ocean, you know, every, almost every day. And that's, that's good. And I'm going to start doing some walks too with my friend, David. We're going to start taking some walks together and, you know, maybe do like six kilometers several times a week in the mountains. Uh, thank you. Glad you like my hat. Um, uh, the hat gives you a style that uh, many lost nowadays hate the baseball cap style. Yeah. Um, I have a baseball hat I wear sometimes. I don't wear this. I used to, I never wore this before because the only way I had to get around was a motorcycle. And this would obviously fly off a, a motorcycle, but I might start wearing it more in town. You know, we'll see. I've got some other cool hats too. I'll show them to you sometime. I've got the, the jungle hat, you know, the ones like they wear in the, the Tarzan movies, you know, the round one that's, that's hard. I got one of those, a real one from uh, South America. Um, let's see. It's called Panama hats are cool. I have a couple I wear regularly. Yeah, they are cool. I'll tell you a story going way back, like uh, 50 years ago, whatever. I used to live in California. This is in the 1970s, San Diego. Me and my friend Richard. Um, we're walking around on the beach in uh, Laguna Beach, I think it was, and um, came across a place selling hats. Similar to hats, not a real Panama hat, but this style of hat. And they had a white one and a, and, a, and a beige one like this one. And so we both bought these hats, and we put them on, and we you know, had our swim suits on. We're walking around the beach there. And uh, all of a sudden, these girls kept coming up to us. We had girls coming up to us all day long just because we were wearing these silly hats. So, yeah, it, says it does work. Uh, trolls are out heavy tonight. Yeah, it's usually the same couple guys. I know who they are. You know, the same couple guys that that's all they do is sit around, you know, 
and eat Doritos, you know, and uh, and go online and insult people. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I block them, you know. But then they, what they do is they just open a new YouTube account and uh, come on again, you know. So anyway, whatever floats your boat, you know. If that's all you've got to do, you don't have much of a life, you know. Uh, let's see. Do you try playing playing the lullaby song U W A W sent you to help the baby sleep? Um, I remember when you sent me that, but I haven't tried that. No. Can you send it to me again? I get a lot of emails. Send it to me again. I'll try it. I promise. I will try it. I just I forgot all about that. I do remember you sending that to me. The baby hadn't come yet. So yeah, send it to me again. I'll try it. Try it. Last night we were in desperation mode. Didn't really try anything. Um, my last nade was part nanny uh, for a French family. Okay. Let's see. Need to run bedtime here. Just wanted to congratulate you and Jen. I wish you well. Thank you so much, Elon. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Sleep well. Um, congrats. Thank you, Philippine Expat Pepper. Um, you got to go to his YouTube channel, Philippine Expat Prepper. He's got a really good channel. Been in the Philippines for a long time. He's actually learning Tagalog, going to be a Philippine citizen, which he's the only uh, foreigner that I've met that's retired in the Philippines. It's actually becoming a Philippine citizen. And it's really interesting, all the things he went through to do that. So he's got a really good YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out. Uh, Joe, I just got here. Did y'all have the baby already? Yes, we did. It was on the 27th. At 2.01 in the afternoon, she had a cesarean infection. Mother and baby both doing fine. Um, telling expat prepper, 400 pesos a day. We have a full-time cook cleaner. Yeah, we've got um, a, she comes in on Sunday. She's usually about 8.30 and stays till like 3. And she cleans the whole house from top to bottom. Whatever we need her to do, she does. And we pay her 600. Uh, she only wanted five, but. I like to, over, I overpay. She's got a little girl. She's a single mom. Um, so I give her 600 and also she's a, she works for a friend of mine too, but she's got, you know, two foreigners that she works for, but, um, she's really great. Really good. Um, this Philippine expat prepper, 8 AM to 5 PM does it all. Um, Philippine expat prepper have a maid two days a week, single guy in condo don't need much cleaning and washing. Yeah, when I was living uh, by myself in Dulce Vida, my friend had a maid come in once a, once every two weeks. So I decided to try it. I was 500 pesos. And you know, I had a studio apartment. But when the first time she cleaned the place, I didn't realize how, how dirty it was. I thought it was clean. But, you know, she just cleaned every surface of the whole place. And it just was nice to have a, a really, really clean apartment. So I started using her. And the same thing here. This is a place that's you know, got a lot of work. It's got this whole wood floor that needs to be taken care of. And we got another big living room back there. We got a big deck. We got the kitchen. We got three bedrooms. You know, so it's a lot to take care of, you know. And she does a really great job. Uh, let's see. Best of luck, Anita. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Belfast, Ireland. Wow. I would like to go back to Ireland and spend some more time there. The only place I've ever been was Shannon, Ireland. And uh, I've got ancestors, like, on my mother's side that are Irish. And I just love Ireland. I love the pubs. I love the culture. <clears throat> and what I like most about Ireland is the ancient history. There's some incredible uh, ruins in, uh, in Ireland, you know, that go back thousands of years and really interesting place. Uh, let's see. Philippine expat prepper. Cool. We are busy here and cook for eight crew and such every day. Wow. Uh, Jesse Smullett. Let's see, um, Anita Henderson. Hello, Anita, nice to see you. Boom, boom, Anita. Oops. Anita Henderson, let's see, hello. Yeah, if you got any comments or questions, let me know. Anything you guys wanna talk about? Got an election coming up there in America pretty soon, huh? Let's see. Um, Gibbles. Hey, Gibbles. Nice to see you. He's, Gibbles has been one of my subscribers for, I think, three years. I mean, always commenting on my live streams, commenting on my videos and stuff. 
says Rogan was cute when he looked into the camera. He's going to be a lady killer someday. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I guess someone told me that um, they don't see clearly for like another 10 days. Like, you know, they're 10 days old. They can, everything's kind of a blur, I guess. So he looks at you, but he's not really seeing you yet. But he does. Uh, I know his hearing's good, though, because anytime there's a noise, he, he jerks his head. So he definitely hears just fine. Uh, Philippine expat Pepper May, my maid lady, uh, do some shopping, laundry, and cleaning only, and gets angry all the times that I don't eat enough. <laughs> yeah, our maid, um, she was over here yesterday, and she, um, Jen wanted some Filipino soup or something. She made it for her, you know, so she's really handy. She can do whatever we need. Thanks for the shout out. My pleasure. Uh, Jimbo, congratulations. You have more energy than I do. And by the way, I'll be back in the Philippines August to, to marry my fiance. Well, Jimbo, look me up. Let's get together. Let's have a cup of coffee. And uh, congratulations on your engagement there. And I don't have that much energy. I just have my coffees every day. I have my coffee and my, I drink iced tea all day long. So I'm getting my, my caffeine shot all day. So all I drink is unsweetened iced tea all day. Um, must say I don't miss the baby times the buggers knows when you finally fall asleep. They do. They do. Yeah. Hey, Mark and Jen, congratulations on your newborn baby. Thank you so much. Anita Henderson, God bless you three. It's just wonderful to see how life works out good. God's good. Yeah. Um, when I look, when I think about what it was like, the month before I decided to come to the Philippines in my life. And if you would have told me you're going to be, you know, five years time, you're going to be, have a beautiful Filipino wife. You're going to live in a beautiful home on the beach and you're going to have a newborn baby. I would think you're crazy. I said, there's no way that's ever going to happen to me. And yep, here we are, you know, you never know. So you don't give up, you know, just keep on plugging away and uh, eventually things will change, but you have to have a plan too. You have to, know what it is you want if you don't know what you want you can't get it uh but you know you're just uh one of those things you know so anyways life is all good and um uh, i've been uh really busy lately trying to get everything sorted out you know we still have to we're gonna have to take a couple trips to uh, cebu and manila to get you know passport social security card um we got to register the baby's birth because it was on a Saturday when he was born. And so the, the uh, office was, or it was Holy, I think it was Holy Day or something. For some reason, the office at the hospital that registers the birth wasn't open. So we got to go back and do that um, probably tomorrow. Imperial Wizard, hi, North Point, uh, Bruce. Jen is uh, not be, but, uh, oh, yes, yeah, all, all good. So anyway, you know, life is good. Um, but yeah, you know, we haven't driven our motorcycle since um, since I got the car. So I'm thinking about selling. You know, I'm really thinking about just it's time to uh, it's time to uh, just give it up. You know, and not ride motorcycles anymore because it's like I just haven't used it, and it's not safe anyway. You know, so I think we'll just give up on the motorcycle. And, just drive the car. This is Gibbles. It's great to hear that Jen and Rogan are doing well. It will take a little while to recover from this. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised how fast she's doing this. We, you know, steps that go up to our to our car, our apartments on the second floor. And the first day, you know, we had to help her up the steps. And yesterday, she climbed the steps with the baby. So she's doing good. So let's see, uh, Ice Cream Man, congratulations, Mark and Jen, on the newborn from Oregon. Thank you so much. You know, Oregon's one of my favorite states. Oh. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, get in the ocean again, go for a swim today. Let's see. Um, Let's see, the U.S. Embassy accepts a PSA, whatever that is, for CRBA. You will need to expedite it because the PSA can take a year to get. Wow. Okay. Uh, 
uh, fighting the bureaucracy, that's going to be fun in two countries. Well, I got a friend of mine up in um, Valencia. He's got five boys, and he's done the whole thing with, um, you know, the passports. He showed me passports for all of his boys, you know, both Filipino and American, and he's got it all sorted out. And uh, Alan sent me the song, so I got it. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go see him. He's, he's actually got him on his computer, can print out the forms and stuff. So we'll get that moving as quick as we can, you know. But we're not going anywhere for a long time anyway. It's not like we're going to go anywhere outside the country for probably a couple of years. Everything will work one day at a time. Sweet Jesus, enjoy every minute. Minute, minute, minute stone life is so short. She's so right about that. You have to enjoy every day. I, I'm a, a stoic, Marcus Aurelius. I believe in living in the moment. And don't worry about things you can't change. If something's beyond your control, don't even think about it. because there's nothing you can do about it anyways. Uh, top mindset coach. I used to live in Newport Beach, Dana Point, and Laguna Beach. Lovely places to live. I attended the University of California at Irvine. So I'm an anteater. Okay, I can't read that. Um, that is a beautiful place. That's a damn good university, too, so good for you. Um, yeah, Laguna Beach. I used to love going down there and walk along the beach, the tidal pools and everything. and yeah, we used to also go down to a place called Black Speech where the guys used to come up with the hang gliders. This is back in the 70s, and we used to hang out down there a lot. But, yeah, California's great. It's just so damn expensive now, you know, way, way beyond I, anything I could ever afford. So I take my house on the beach here in the Philippines. Okay, PSA is the official birth certificate in the Philippines. Thank you. One less thing I have to learn. <laughs> So yeah, we yeah tomorrow we go down. They give you a document to fill out at the hospital. Then you take it upstairs to the hospital, and they do something there. And then I think you got to take it downtown somewhere. So you know, it's you never do everything in one place when it comes to paperwork in the Philippines. It's okay, you go here. Now you go downtown. Now you go here. Now you go there. You know, to, to sort things out. So I'm just used to that, and we'll just like take it as we go and do it step by step by step and, and get everything done. But we will have to go try. First thing I think I got to work on is the, the social security. I have to go in um, and just notify them the baby was born. Um, so anyway, you know, it's gonna gonna take a little bit of time, but we'll get it all done. Everything works out in time. You just have to be patient. Like getting my driver's license, that was a real ordeal. And finally got that done. Just, you know, kept going uh, step by step, got it done. I mean, I was still waiting to get my um, driver's, or my, um, my uh, license plate and registration for my car. It's been three months now. And uh, I got pulled over by the highway patrol the other day. And he said, well, it's illegal to drive this car because it's not registered. I said, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? You buy a car. They don't tell you this when you buy the car, of course, that you cannot drive it until it's registered. And so in here in the Philippines, it takes months to get your registration. And this guy was going to give me a ticket. This, he was really kind of a hardcore Highway patrolman, not as nice as the normal cops I deal with. And so, um, you know, I kept talking to him and finally he just let me go. And so I went down to the dealership. I said, look, you know, I need something to prove that this car is registered. You know, even though you don't have the, the original, I need something today. I can't leave without it. I'm tired of getting pulled over and threatened by the highway patrol. And so anyway, they contacted whoever they contacted to get the registration. They faxed over or emailed over the registration two pages and they printed it out for me. So I've got that now next time I'm pulled over. But yeah, that's the thing when you buy a new car, a new motorcycle, it takes forever to get the license plate and registration done. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 I don't want to miss anybody here. Um, um. Okay, here we go. Love you, the Philippines. PSA birth certificate online delivery delivered in three to four working days within Metro Manila. Three day working days outside Metro. Okay, thank you so much for that. PSA birth certificate online delivery. There you go. You just you just helped me out a lot with that information. I really appreciate it. Loving the Philippines. So if that's a um, a YouTube channel, guys, check out that channel. You loving the Philippines. Really appreciate that. Uh, so Izzy and Chris, you take that. And after a year, you can go back and get the PSA unless you 
pay to have it expedited. The U.S. Embassy won't take the paper the hospital gives you. Yeah, that makes sense. Hope the kid gets dual citizenship. Oh, you will have dual citizenship. I have passports and use them sometimes to confuse immigration when I travel. Yeah, my daughters have dual citizenship. They've got an American passport and a British passport. So when they fly to America, they use they enter the country on their U.S. passport. When they fly into England, they use their English passport. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paul, good to hear that you are doing okay. Congratulations on your new baby. Thank you. Anita, so much love. Sons uh, from Belfast, Ireland. Enjoy every moment. Life is, to, life is to relax and enjoy every precious moment. God bless you. Yeah, you're so right about that. Enjoy every moment. Live in the day. That's what I do. Oh, let's see. Because, yeah, time goes by quick. It's like, you know, in a blink of an eye, they're, they're not little kids anymore. So, you know, so I have to make the most of it. And I'm so lucky I don't have a, have the job and worry about that. I can stay home and, you know, make my videos here at the house and uh, just spend, you know, as much time as I can with them, you know. Uh, Philippines bureaucracy is similar to Italy, only slower. It, uh, if that's possible, it's, a snail could outrun it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I deal with the bureaucracy in the Philippines, though, the way I look at it, when I'm sitting there at the desk or wherever dealing with some bureaucrat, is that they didn't write the rules. They didn't make the laws up. They're just doing their job that they were trained to do. And so they have to do what they have to do. So I'm just patient with them, trying to have a sense of humor about the whole thing. And eventually, it all gets sorted out somehow. So that's the big, that's the key to surviving the Philippines is just be patient and realize that things aren't going to move the way you expect them to, and things aren't efficient over here. They just love paperwork. They love it. Um, <clears throat> I was at the hospital, and I forgot my aspirin that I take from my back before I go to bed. So I got in the pharmacy to buy some aspirin, and it's like there was like three pieces of paper and things I had to sign to buy one little bubble pack, pack of uh, aspirin. All they had is baby aspirin. They didn't have like full strength aspirin at a hospital so but yeah sign all this and then all of a sudden i said okay i want the aspirin okay fill this out sign here and then go down there the other in the hospital go pay and then come back with your receipt and we'll give you the aspirin you can't just kind of here's some money can i buy the aspirin no that would be too easy but that's just the way it is here you know anyway guys i think i'm going to want to wrap this up i've got to go pick up jen's mother she's going to come over and help jen out i've got friends coming over here to do some uh, do some interviews and also go for a swim. So thank you for watching. I appreciate the super sticker too. Thank you for that. I appreciate the baby lullaby too. I got the email and I'll try that out. And um, so anyway, you know, keep in touch. Anything you want to know, send me emails. You know, I'm always able to see, always able to easy to contact. If you see me around town, come up and talk to me. Um, I won't be around as much as I used to be with because of the baby. So, but we'll be at the mall, you know, in downtown. Why not? Of our favorite restaurants. So uh, we'll see you guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks for um, doing everything you can. I really uh, appreciate it. What is the current exchange rate convert US dollar to peso? I don't really know. I don't, I don't really know. I think it's like 50 something. Thank you so much. Goodbye.